Hello, Rihanna. Hi, Inga. How are you? I'm good, good. Thank you. And you? I'm good, thank you. Busy week, but good. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm so excited to have this uh, Facebook Live with you again. Yes, um, I think it's a good follow up to last week and I've been getting good feedback and people have been saying it's been helping them. And funny enough, not only from an employer perspective, but from an employee perspective, because um, they're listening in terms of the tips that we're giving and they're applying it to themselves from an employee perspective, which is really good. Fantastic. Really fantastic. And I got some feedback as well, some uh, messages on Facebook and on LinkedIn as well, interestingly. People saying that uh, thank you for sharing uh, these uh, insights and tips as uh, they really appreciate. And uh, one of the feedback uh, that I received also that uh, people like that it's uh, quite short. It's uh, half an hour and yeah. it works so well that uh, they can listen yeah. that on the way to work or on the way back, uh, like on their commute. So it's, uh, it's good timing as well, not just content, but timing as well. Exactly. And I think what's good about it, because um, the one feedback that I got uh, she said she had an employee performance appraisal like the next day and, and the video came up and she said, I'm so glad it was there for me to watch even though you recorded earlier in the day and I watched it that evening and then I used the information in there to prepare for my meeting the next day. Fantastic. And according to her, her meeting went well. So, yeah, I, I think that's good if we can reach out to people and help them. Great. Right. So let's uh, introduce ourselves. And, uh, maybe there are some new people joining mm. that, uh, that will uh, tune in and listen. So my name is Inga Azara. I'm a personal brand development, uh, leadership development, and uh, business development mentor and business partner. I help uh, business owners, executives, and um, managers of the companies uh, to manage people performance, uh, develop business, and uh, obviously develop your personal brand as well. So it's all about uh, development, people, business development. Okay, and so a little bit about myself. So I'm Rihanna Jaina from Constantia Consulting. My background is predominantly in human resources and I work with businesses to help them grow their business actually through their people. Because if you think about it, people they are the heart of any business. And you're only as good as a manager with a team that you have around you. So I come in, yes, from an HR perspective, and I help you look at how compliant are you with legislation, irrespective of the country that you're in, because I do international HR. But I also help you with things like we're discussing today in terms of performance reviews, how to put feedback. And also, if you have a difficult um, employee, how do you manage those employees? And then do you have the proper policies and procedures in place to motivate, retain, and engage your employees. So that's me and in terms of what I do for my clients. Fantastic. So Alliance, uh, that I uh, learned about people, business development, uh, leadership, uh, management, yeah. and uh, culture comes in place as well there. Yes, exactly, yeah. So you've had uh, quite some uh, performance conversations uh, during last week. Uh, what have you noticed that, uh, what is the most frequent question from managers regarding preparation to performance reviews? For me, I think what it is, and this links back on to what we mentioned briefly last week about managers and you know why don't they why aren't they really prepared for performance reviews? I don't think it's they don't want to do it. I think it's in terms of pre preparation. And I think the question comes down to do they have the necessary skills to be able to do that performance review and give performance feedback? And secondly, do they have confidence to deliver effective feedback? Absolutely. And when I speak to my clients and line managers, then I think it's more around the confidence aspect and how do I manage difficult situations during that performance review? Mm. Yeah. From one perspective, of course, confidence comes with experience and yes. uh, doing it. However, of course, uh, we want to help managers to prepare for mm -hmm. the um, for potential challenges that might come in uh, performance review, uh, for potential surprises that might come. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit mm -hmm. of mentoring uh, preparation needed. However, of course, what I've noticed that uh, what helps in uh, building confidence 
is uh, thinking in advance how I am preparing, what kind of questions I will ask, what kind of yeah. feedback I will provide, and what yeah. kind of calls the employee has had. So have I gathered the feedback on now uh, mm. what we're preparing performance management? Mm. What are your tips and uh, how do you help uh, managers to kind of uh, grow the confidence? Uh, yeah, so what I have done with managers in the past, um, they've asked for one-to-one -one coaching. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is, is that I have done a one-to-one -one session with them in terms of taking them through the performance review and performance feedback. So how do you set the objectives? What do you look at? How do you evaluate behavior? And how then do you give that feedback? And in that coaching session, I would then act as an employee and they the manager and they're giving me feedback. And in that way, I can give them feedback. Hmm. Um, and then we do it actually. So we'll have employee number one come in and they understand the managers being trained up in the process. Hmm. And they know that I'm sitting there to observe and give feedback and I help them actually do the performance feedback. With the employee. And we ask the employee to give feedback as well. And then on employee number two and three, they do it entirely on their own with me sitting in the background and observing. So, yes, it does come back to practice, practice, practice. Yeah. And then creating the confidence through that. But I, what I also, the tips that I give them is preparation. Take that hour out before you go into the performance feedback session. Mm -hmm. Write down exactly in terms of Yes, these are the objectives. This is what, I, what I, I have observed. And this is the feedback I'm giving on the observation. And as I said last week, keep to the facts that you have observed because that will take the emotion out of it. And you bet, then you are able to give examples as well with regard to that because that becomes your evidence that you provide. Mm. And I talk about write your storyboard. Because when you write your storyboard, you're preparing yourself to have a conversation. So those are the tips I can give people with regard to that. Absolutely. Okay. One of other things. Is the noise coming from my side or your side? I'm wondering. Do you hear the noise? What noise? Uh, some noise in the video. You don't hear that? No. Okay, fine. Maybe it's just some bug from my side. Sorry for that. No, not a problem. So uh, one other tip uh, that I have given is um, in preparation to performance review, ask feedback from other managers and other colleagues. As uh, sometimes if uh, you as manager give feedback to employee, uh, employee might have another perspective, another view. And uh, it's good uh, to have kind of collated uh, wider perspective from colleagues and from uh, other managers that employee collaborated with to make exactly. sure that you are not uh, kind of assessing them subjectively but uh, there is more objective assessment and mm -hmm. uh, objective feedback from wider business and then you can have a really great conversation with employee that uh, there have been several people giving feedback and these are the messages they are giving let's let's discuss let's unlock and let's see what mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. work with that yeah i also talk to my managers about doing 360 360 degree performance evaluation feedback Mm -hmm. So it's not only them observing and getting the feedback, but having the employee fill in the questionnaire, having the teammates fill in the questionnaire, mm -hmm. having the clients fill in the questionnaire, and then whatever else that they're delivering that service to, whether it's internally or externally. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the manager themselves complete the questionnaire and then taking all of that information because it comes back to what you're then saying is it becomes more objective. And what they then do is they would look for themes and bring all of that information together and cluster it within those themes. And it makes it easier then to give feedback. Now, a lot of people say about 360 degree performance review feedback is a lot of work. Again, think about it in terms of for how long are you going to be doing it? And it's very important that that individual gets feedback because one, they then know whether they're performing in the position or not. 
Two, they will understand what the development areas are, and they will also know in terms of what areas do they need to improve upon. Mm-hmm. But it also helps you to give feedback from others because it substantiates what you as a line manager have picked up as well. So the feedback is not only coming from you, but from a broader audience. Yeah, yeah. Most probably, and uh, one of our concerns, usually that's uh, people help with 860 as a great tool for feedback. One concern is that uh, will people provide objective feedback uh, or they will just write something polite down? Mm. One of the things that's helped is uh, in preparation is to slightly educate feedback providers okay. and uh, have a conversation in advance mm. saying, I really appreciate honest uh, feedback, so please. Uh, before feeling it, uh, take some time to think about it. And uh, I will not take it personally, but I will take it seriously. So please do provide uh, what are my strengths and uh, what are my development areas, what worked well and what I could do differently. So this kind of tip helps to eliminate doubts about whether this 360 would be honest and uh, kind of uh, um, unlocking uh, what, what's really going on. Exactly. And I also find... What is helpful is that you obviously have the objectives in terms of the deliverables that they need to deliver on the outputs of the role that they've got. Mm -hmm. But then you've also got the, let's call it the soft skills that they're going to be able to assess as well. And for those soft skills, which are actually competencies, you will have certain behaviors that you need to observe. So for example, if it's a listening skill the person needs, how do they, are they really actually listening to what's being said to them? Uh, do they feed back to what they have heard to make sure the information is correct that they're getting? Mm. So when you give, um, let's say, the peers and other people the questionnaire to complete, to give feedback, give examples of those behaviours that they can then pull out and say, you know, Again, this is what we've seen and this is where we've seen it. And so they bring it again back to specific examples. So it helps with the process. Then people don't have to sit there and think, oh, what am I going to say? And I don't really want to come across as as I'm being negative, Mm. but I need to give the person feedback. So again, if you can keep it to the factual information as much as possible, it helps because it takes the emotion out of the process. Absolutely. And that's really what, what you say. It's really important that uh, to make sure it's really factual and uh, the emotion or mm. personal is taken out of the process. It's about behavior. It's about the results. It's about the outcomes that uh, the person has or has not generated. But yeah. It's not about uh, emotional. It's not about personality as such uh, or a person. Yeah. But yeah. about their impact and about their behavior and results. That they're yeah. This is yeah. this is the, the, the distinguish that uh, managers need to take into account. That uh, make sure that uh, it's uh, it's not personal, but uh, it's practical and it's about behaviors and outcomes rather than person and personality. Exactly, and it comes back to the point we spoke about earlier. Make the time to mm-hmm. be able to do it. Hmm. By putting in that extra time beforehand will make the process easier. Mm-hmm. But if you go into any situation unprepared, then you know the situation is going to take that much longer because you don't know how to manage it and it's almost firefighting and yeah. you don't want to be firefighting in a performance feedback review session. Absolutely. I want to pause and encourage uh, people who are listening, uh, if you have any questions, please mm-hmm. write them down under the video, either during this conversation or later on. Uh, we will definitely pick them up. Uh, if it's during this conversation, we will uh, pick them up uh, and uh, answer straightforward and directly. Uh, if it's after this um, uh, Facebook Live session, then uh, we will answer under the video. Uh, when we pick uh, these questions up or PM us after this uh, session. If uh, you kind of don't want to uh, publish your question, then uh, feel free to uh, message us and we will definitely help with the answer to your question related to performance management. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And I um, second in terms of what you're saying, Inga. 
The other thing which I just thought about while you were talking is that managers sometimes don't know how to manage a situation when an employee brings up something new into the performance feedback session. Uh -huh. And what I advise managers at that stage is to say, to let them know you are taking into, consider into consideration what they are saying, but at that moment in time, you cannot give them feedback on that specifically because you need to obviously go and do your research on it and then be able to give them feedback. So don't just ignore it and just go on with what's going on the paper. Hmm. But listen to what they've said, acknowledge it and say, I'll come back to you on that after the session. I don't have enough information to give you feedback on this during the session. That because be that tends to happen where employees tend to bring in new information. Hmm. That's really fantastic advice as uh, this gives confidence to managers that they don't have unlock all the challenges within the meeting. If something new comes up, then they can uh, pause there and say, let's come back to this uh, yeah. in a different period of time. I will explore this as I don't have this information so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, quite, it is really important because in the employee also from their side feel they are being heard and listened to. Mm -hmm. And now that they'll get feedback on the new information that they provide. Mm -hmm. And also managers need to encourage employees to also bring examples with them to the performance feedback session. Because a performance feedback session is not only a one-way conversation. It's a two-way conversation. So it's me as a manager giving feedback to you as an employee but I need to sit back and listen to your feedback that you're also giving on that objective. And then together we agree in terms of what your rating for that objective should be. Yes. And also what helps is uh, creating feedback and performance culture prior to uh, mid-year or year-end uh, performance conversation. One of uh, the ways how to do it, manager asking him or herself the feedback from their team. Mm. Uh, how, how this uh, went, how the meeting went, is there anything that uh, we need to improve, is there anything I need to do differently to make sure that the message gets delivered to you quicker, faster or more comfortably. So uh, constantly, when uh, we as managers constantly ask for feedback and provide the feedback uh, during uh, the day, during the week, during the months and du during the half a year, then um, our people, they get used to it, they learn it, that actually it's okay to uh, give feedback and to receive feedback and actually feedback helps us all to grow and develop and improve during our performance so feedback culture and this uh, performance focused culture it's something to uh, start well in advance before one-to-one yeah. -one performance conversation as then you as manager will be prepared and uh, you have you will have created the culture that people feel that uh, they actually want to hear feedback and they, uh, they want to improve constantly. And uh, they also want to provide feedback uh, for overall improvement. Mm -hmm. And uh, employees will come prepared and uh, ready for giving and receiving feedback as well. So it's about not just about um, performance conversation, but creating performance and feedback culture in, in your team. Exactly. And something else as well, which I tell managers is that as a manager, I have a manager. So obviously I am going to have my performance review with my manager. And the best thing would be to say, sitting there as an employee, <clears throat> sorry, and getting that feedback from the manager, how would, how do I experience that feedback I'm getting from that manager? What would I want my manager to do differently? And then apply that to yourself when you give feedback to your employees. Now, I also work with small business owners where they don't have a manager because they're the owner of the company. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, how do I do that? And I'm like, so have you been employed in an organization before? And it doesn't matter how long ago this was. But think about that time when you went for your performance review feedback. How did you feel? How did your manager give you feedback? What would you have done differently if you were a manager? 
and then apply it from that situation. Because if you put yourself in their shoes, it makes also the situation um, much more easier. Mm. Yes, and it's also uh, it's thinking about uh, what, what you enjoyed and what you liked and what you didn't uh, when you received uh, feedback. And it's also leading by example. As an mm -hmm. example, a couple of weeks ago, one uh, business owner came to me and he said, uh, you know, uh, my uh, managers in the company that's reporting to me, they don't uh, manage performance well uh, of their teams and employees. They don't provide feedback. They don't set goals. They don't have these one-to-one -one conversations. And uh, I said to him, okay, let's have a conversation. So let's start with you. Yeah. Have you set the goals for your uh, direct reports? He said, no, but they should know what they need to do. I said, do you have one-to-one -one conversations on kind of uh, at least monthly basis? Yeah. Um, Oh, no, we talk uh, every day. I understand you talk every day. However, do you have one-to-one -one conversations where you provide feedback on how they are doing, what they're doing well, and uh, what they need to do differently? Not really, but is it not their job to do it to their employees? And then we had a con conversation that actually we as leaders, we need to lead by example. If yeah. you expect that from your direct reports, uh, then uh, although you are founder, you are CEO of the company, uh, your business owner and mm -hmm. reporting to you so that means that they look up to you as a leader and uh, they they judge like they, they think they assess uh, what he's doing and uh, how, how do I need to replicate that in my team so we yeah. have a conversation that it all starts uh, from the top mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's so true because yes they should be doing some things with the employees but they also your employee Hmm. So even though you've got that hierarchical structure within a company, you need to treat your line managers as employees and, like you say, lead by example because you want them then to go and do certain things within the business. Hmm. And you can only do that if you provide them with the tools yourself hmm. and the information that they then can share with the employees the rest of the employees in the organization. Yes. And then uh, I did um, a workshop uh, for his uh, team leader, for his uh, direct reports managers, uh, for leading the teams mm -hmm. on performance management. And in this workshop, uh, of course, we talk about the concept and we, uh, we work through the tools and techniques. Yeah. And uh, one of the frequent feedback from this team was from, uh, from these uh, managers, they said, well, actually, uh, he, and and they said, he, he doesn't do it. Can you speak to him? <laughs> we need feedback too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of course, I asked them their coaching question. So what have you done to get the feedback from your manager, from the owner of the company? And, uh, of course, uh, I spoke with the owner afterwards and said, yeah. Your, uh, your team, actually, uh, your leadership team, they, they are uh, hungry for feedback. They want to hear from you how mm. they are doing. And uh, uh, and there was a bit of uh, confidence thing as well in the conversation. Now, uh, we, we might think that, well, he's a business owner. He's the CEO of the company. He needs to have confidence mm. to, to do whatever is expected of him. However, we are all humans. And uh, if we don't have experience in some particular things, say in some particular areas or conversations, then we might lack uh, some tools or confidence how to manage these kind of conversations. Exactly. And I think, you know, these days, if you look at organizations, it's so diverse in terms of people with different backgrounds, different cultures, um, English not being their first language, could be the second or third language. But if the business, if the, if the language in the business is English, then you've got to think about as well in terms of how do I communicate to make yeah. it easy and understandable for the person getting the information, especially in a performance review feedback. Mm. Because you don't want them walking out with, hmm, I'm not too sure what I understood by that. Mm. Is he saying I'm not good at my job when that is not what you're saying? Mm. So all these subtleties, that we have to take into consideration and then coming to managers themselves 
if they also come from a background similar to where English is not their first language, they've not yet done this before, it's a dumb, double whammy in terms of, of self-confidence. Especially when giving feedback to someone whose first language is English. Mm. And, and again, it comes back to preparation. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Wow. And if it means that you do it the day before and you practice it, just sitting there as if talking to somebody in a chair, even though there's no one, mm -hmm. it gives you some of the confidence. And also by practicing it, it embeds some of the information um, subconsciously mm -hmm. so that when you go into the situation with your employee, you're not 100% fully prepared for what's going to happen in the situation, but you're 95% there. Absolutely. Absolute must. One of um, the strategies in preparation is preparing your mindset as well. As, uh, sometimes, depending on personality of uh, the leader, they are uh, tempted to either pay attention only to great things and uh, only positive feedback, or they are tempted to kind of look at uh, employee from only developmental perspective and see what needs to be improved, what this employee is doing wrong and uh, what they're not doing enough or some other things. So, of course, there is a balance needed. And uh, as we discussed previously, the right mindset that you come into conversation with, um, with support and mm -hmm. encouragement and empowerment for mm -hmm. To excel, so by nature you should feel that actually this conversation is uh, to help employee yeah. either be even better in uh, what they are great at, or to improve what they need to improve. So this mindset of uh, good intention yeah. uh, and uh, assumption that uh, actually employee wanted to do their best mm. uh, in some things they succeeded and some things maybe they didn't, but they wanted to do their best. So these two things good intention and uh, assumption that employee wanted to do their best. And that helps to have the right language in the conversation, the language which is uh, supportive, uh, empowering, and uh, caring. Mm. And then whatever the feedback is, either it's positive or it's developmental, it's uh, easier for employee to accommodate it and to uh, perceive it and to think how to integrate it in their future actions. Exactly. And the mindset is really important because I think some managers think, oh, my God, there's going to be a conflict in that performance mm. feedback session. But if you change your mindset away from it being a conflict in terms of I'm going to go in and I'm giving feedback and I got the reasons as to why I'm giving this feedback. And like you say, look at the positive aspects and come back to what I said last week. Start off with a positive, then in the middle, give them, I don't like to call it negative, more development areas. Mm. And yes, if, if there is feedback that is negative, look at how you can paraphrase or rephrase that negative um, information that's being given and then end off with a positive part of it. So walk into a performance review session with the mind stop. It's not going to create a conflict. Hmm. People know that they're there to get feedback um, in terms of how they've performed, whether it's for six months or whether it's for the 12 months. Hmm. And I think the other thing as well is that what scares them is when an employee sits and challenges them hmm. in a performance review session. And again, do not look at it as look at it as a challenge, it's the employee giving you feedback in terms of why they are differing with your opinion. So mm. sit back and listen to what they are telling you. Mm. And again, if you don't have the information to substantiate what they're saying, acknowledge what they're telling you and say, I will have to look into what you're telling me. So let's come back to that point at a later stage. And it could be that you will say, okay, we cannot 
um, complete the performance review today because that information is lacking. But let's reschedule time. Let me get that information and then let's revisit. Mm. Because you don't want the employee to think, oh, it's just a one-sided conversation. They're taking me just through the process because they have to tick the boxes, but it's not really listening to what I'm saying. Mm. Because when you build up trust and credibility with the process as well. Mm. And remember, employees talk to each other. And if somebody's had a positive experience, they're going to tell their fellow employee. And that person will walk into the session with a positive mindset already. And you want to create that domino effect, as I call it. Absolutely. Uh, so that's a uh, really important fact that sometimes employees uh, bring different factors, start to argue or have another opinion in the mm -hmm. conversation. And what's really important, uh, as you said, that managers are listening to that. And uh, sometimes it's just um, simple words as uh, I hear you, just mm -hmm. say I hear you. Uh, and that makes uh, employee feel that creates the feeling that manager is listening, that uh, yeah. they're not yeah. ignoring or they are not uh, kind of not willing to listen, but uh, sometimes the language that we speak is such a difference. Uh, yeah. Just by saying, I hear you, uh, employee gets the message that, uh, yes, he is being heard, and mm. then a, a manager can, see, uh, can say, uh, and I don't have enough facts in this uh, about this situation. Let's pause it here. I will go and explore, and let's come back uh, at this and this state. Exactly. And I think also what's quite important is the fact that Listen to what your employer is saying and let them complete their sentences. Mm. Don't midway just jump in. Mm. They're going to say, you're not listening to me. Again, you want to come up with your own opinion before listening to me telling you exactly what I want to say. So let them complete their sentences and then you come back with what you were saying. I hear what you say. I don't have the information at hand to look at this further right now. Could we park it for now? Let's go on to the other points and come back to that later. Mm. And when you come to the point then later and you still feel you don't have the information, then to say, you know, we are not going to be able to discuss this in this session because I am going to need further information, which you could possibly provide with me, but I will also have to speak to other people if they can provide the information. So how about we reschedule the session and we finalize your performance review after we've got all the information on hand. Yeah. And the important thing is to not start arguing with employee and not start, say, fight yourself. Like as a manager, don't say, as you, Rihanna, said uh, that, uh, don't start to kind of fight and, uh, and jump into uh, okay. when uh, employee is talking. Uh, if you see that actually employee is not right, you can say, I hear you, and don't say but, because yeah. uh, but will kind of sparkle the conflict and sparkle the argument again. Say, I hear you, and uh, I, I've had different facts as well to add into this situation. So, again, the language that we choose mm. instead of but, mm. and that already builds that kind of uh, more friendly and uh, more positive bridge into conversation as that immediately sparks uh, the arguments against you. Yeah. And also it could be that you provide the employee with some feedback and they will automatically become defensive. Hmm. And they jump in. And again, let them vent and let them get it off their chest. Hmm. And you go back and you go back. And, and this, this is the other thing I wanted to say is when you go with I hear you, it must come across genuine. It yeah. mustn't come across if you're just saying it for the sake of saying it. Mm. And you can tell them I hear you. However, have you thought about it from the other person's perspective? Mm. That gave feedback. You don't want to tell them who gave feedback. Mm. But have you thought about it, how the other person perceived this information that they provided? And again, you don't use the but, but use the word however and mm. and saying you know have you thought about it from the other individual's perspective who provided the feedback and and again for employee and line manager is putting yourself in the shoes of the other individuals who will be giving that feedback mm -hmm. so to summarize uh, and kind of start concluding our conversation what mm. i'm hearing is 
uh, what we both agree on that uh, the mindset and uh, being genuine is really, really important, both in preparation and also in uh, when leading the conversation. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, preparation is one of the key tactics uh, to confidence and mm. to success of uh, performance management conversation. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, and I can't emphasize anymore what you've said because we're on the same page. We're seeing from the same hymn sheet, as I call it. Yeah, so I say that uh, we work with um, different clients. However, our clients for, kind of fall into similar uh, groups like small, medium, and sometimes corporate uh, companies. Yeah. Uh, which are uh, located in different uh, territories, different geographies. So mm -hmm. these um, uh, cases and uh, these case studies and examples are actually relevant to uh, wh whichever country you go, uh, whichever company you go, there will always be mm -hmm. similar situations. So performance management is um, so uh, so important theme. Uh, it doesn't matter either you are small, medium size or corporate uh a uh, huge company, this is really essential, uh, essential success factor for the company, having performance management in the right way. Yeah, I think it shows it doesn't matter where you are. Ultimately, mm. everybody has the same fears and challenges Absolutely. as managers of, of companies. Yes. And uh, to, to uh, kind of finalize this, I again want to encourage those who are listening now or who will be listening later on to this uh, video conversation, if you have any question or mm -hmm. if you have um, any additional tips uh, to the ones that we have shared, please comment them under this video and we will pick up the questions and we will answer them. Or send us, uh, PM us, uh, send us message if you don't want to uh, publish your question openly and mm -hmm. we will definitely pick it up in one-to-one -one conversation with you and make sure that uh, we support, we um, empower you to have really great performance conversations and uh, have the confidence to um, lead these conversations with uh, with ease and uh, with success. Exactly. And, and also, if you feel you want us to cover a specific aspect or topic around performance feedback or performance reviews, again, either PM us or put it in the comments box and we will look at covering that in the next session for you. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rihanna. And uh, thank, thank you, you everyone who was uh, listening and will be listening. And thank you in advance for the questions that will be coming for, for tips uh, for the next uh, next topics. Okay. Thank you, Inga. Thank you for arranging this. And we'll speak to all of you again next week. Absolutely. Okay. Bye. Bye.